Welcome to the Director's Cut of Christian Nutrition, the show where we review every single episode of VeggieTales chronologically. And by we, I mean just me. Twas the night before Easter, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a... Wait a second! Easter? Is this another Christmas story retold with with an Easter skin to it? Didn't we just do this last year with an Easter story? I mean, come on, you guys. Can you be any less original, I guess? No, wait. Don't answer that question. I have seen VeggieTales on Netflix. That's a dangerous road. I'll name mine. Stuffy. Twas the Night Before Easter, released in March of 2011. It is a retelling of Twas the Night Before Christmas. Let's just move on past that now, because otherwise we're going to be ranting the entire episode. Oh, found another one. Oh, and another. Uh, Larry, slow down. Save some for me. Finders keepers, losers weepers, Bob. I'm not as good as you at finding Easter eggs. Oh. Did Larry just pull an egg out of Bob's butt? Let's watch the instant replay. Hey. He did! He did pull an egg out of Bob's butt! I mean, who saw that one coming? I, when I watched this episode, I put it in, I started playing it, I was like, this is gonna be a pleasant episode, I'm gonna enjoy this, my whole family can watch this. But now I know, it's full of dirty, rotten humor! And yes, that was kind of an egg pun! Oh! Sorry, it was right there. Sorry, it was right there? Larry, show him some respect, you just pulled an egg out of his butt! How am I gonna find the- <gasps> Golden egg. Cause I've got a golden ticket. I've got a golden ticket. I've got a golden chance to make my way. What do you suppose is in here? A giant cream filled chocolate bunny? Please tell me it's a giant cream filled chocolate bunny. I see that the time Larry spent working at Mr. Nezzer's chocolate factory is really taking a toll on his psyche. It looks like he has some PTSD. I mean, really, look at how much he loves that fake golden egg. So don't you worry, it's still the same dress haven you know and love, but now with a new blue curtain. Wow, is this a sequel to Larry Boy and the Bad Apple? Because the last time we saw Petunia, as a reporter, was in that episode. Is this Larry Boy and Twas the Night Before Easter? This is Marley Mead signing off for Access 3, keeping CRISPR crisp. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Petunia does her best Bruce Almighty impersonation and complains that she isn't getting any of the important news stories. She makes the valid point that a new blue curtain is not news. I agree. She states how she wishes she could do theater and what do you know, the local theater is shutting down. What a coincidence. Archibald is tearing it down to build a playground for the children at the homeless shelter. Uh, Petunia is convinced that it shouldn't be tore down and that there is a lot of good it could still do. There has not been a production here in over 15 years and the building is in need of extensive repair. What would you suggest I do? Uh, how about fix it up, put on some Christ-centered plays, and give the homeless children some free tickets? That's just one suggestion, though. I can't believe you quit your job. Thanks for helping me move, Lewis. I can't believe I quit my job because you quit your job. Well, based on previous episodes, we know you two aren't meant to be together in every episode, so... It's called Up With Bunnies. Catchy, but Easter is only a week away. You better get hopping. Ooh, clever. Easter is only a week away and there's no script? What? There is no conceivable way you can make a quality theater production in less than a week with no script? Who are you, Aaron Sorkin? We're ready for auditions. It's a great turnout. The whole town is a buzz. Auditions, but there aren't even a script. What lines are they gonna read for this audition? Who thought this was a good idea? I'm Jimmy. And I'm Jerry. We're auditions one. And two. We really love attention. And we need something to do. I like how everyone's going all out for these auditions, despite the fact they don't know what this play is even about, except for the fact that it's, it might be for Easter. We really hope it's helped us make at least a couple friends. 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 Oh, great. Now my ears are bleeding. Thanks, VeggieTales. I hope you sleep well at night knowing that you made my ears bleed and probably some other people's as well. I'm trying to impress my boss. Songs make me feel dandy. It gets me out of doing chores. I hear there will be candy. Candy? Where? And, and what kind? Don't tease me, VeggieTales. Don't tease me. Puppies are cuddly. 
Puppies are cute. They're never nasty or mean. Oh no, the puppy lady from Esther. Puppies are cuddly. Puppies are cute. They're never nasty or mean. Oh great, now my ears are bleeding again. Thanks, VeggieTales. Oh, I'm sure my doctor will love this. That was interesting. No, seeing someone put a bunch of Mentos into a two liter bottle of Diet Coke is interesting. If ever one day I will queen. That was just plain weird. Petunia decides that no one who tried out is really worthy of being the lead and luckily some hotshot actress is coming back into town for Easter, man. What are the odds? I mean, they're still super low as she would be a fool to accept this role with such limited time and no script, but whatever. So the superstar, whose name is Cassie, arrives in town and you can immediately tell she is out of place in this cast. She must be some sort of guest star on the show. Ah! What was that? I think it was a giant painted Easter boy. How many concussions is Larry up to now? I mean, I know VeggieTales on TV kind of took it to him really hard, but uh, it seems to be continuing here which makes me a little bit worried. Ah! Yep, we all should have seen this coming. Next. Petunia then expresses to her team that they need to make everything bigger. They need to make the most spectacular Easter musical ever that has nothing to do with Jesus, uh, of course. She later finds out that none of the town plans on attending since Easter is the next morning after her play and everyone is going to bed early. Yeah, like that would ever happen. Anyways, Petunia realizes what the rest of us already knew. She needs that hotshot singer from out of town to be in her play to attract people to come to the play. And now it's time for the latest dance craze with Jean-Claude and Philippe, the part of the show where Jean-Claude and Philippe come out and teach us the latest dance craze. So watch them whip and nay nay. Now watch me whip, now watch me nay nay. Okay. Now watch me whip, whip, watch me nay nay. We're a couple of shipperly for French bees. Most of the veggies totally agree. -y. And when we're feeling really, really happy, we, we do, do the hop arena. Uh, the hop arena? What is that? What is the hop arena? And how do I do the hop arena? What am I missing out on? Will people like me if I fail to grasp it? Should I just eat the bonbon and go back to bed? These are all questions I asked myself upon hearing about this crazy dance craze. So basically the hop arena consists of wearing bunny slippers and ears and hopping to the left and then back to the right and then back to the left and then back to the right. It's really more like hopscotch, I guess. Hold it! Stop hop, the music! Hop, what hop, are you doing? Hop, hop to the left, hop to the right, hop to the left, hop to the right again. This isn't a dance, it's hopscotch! Hey, I just said that, Archibald. Stop stealing my thoughts. This is actually quite fun. Let's see, I hop to the left. Happy hop arena. Then hop to the right. I love the hop arena. I see Archibald has finally given in and drank the Kool-Aid. This has been the latest dance craze with Jean-Claude and Philippe. Tune in next time to hear Jean-Claude say, I am embarrassed for you. Amen to that, brother. So apparently Cassie Cassava, I guess, agrees to be in Petunia's play. And by agree, I mean that Petunia and Archibald trick her into being in their play through some uh, very non-Christian antics. I also finally Googled why she has an epic singing voice. As it turns out, she is voiced by Melinda Doolittle, who you probably don't know, and that's for good reason. She was on a season of American Idol, but not one of the earlier ones that everyone saw, one of the later ones. It's a full house. They are loving it. Are they playing the bunny song? It's a full house. They are loving it. They are! They are playing the bunny song! I just go out there, sing this song, and then I can go? That's right! You know what? I know earlier they lied to her and stuff, and that was very non-Christian, obviously, but now this feels more like a hostage situation, and I'm uncomfortable with that. Yes, because for me, there's different levels of sin, obviously. <laughs> I mean, what, you think God thinks all sin's equal? We then see VeggieTales essentially make a song that is meant to make Cassie look great, until... That's moments when you make a large building-sized robot that you lose control of and it crushes everything. Oh, look what I've done. 
Thank goodness no one was injured. Well, that is convenient considering all the damage the bunny just caused. You know, I thought we learned all about giant bunnies being bad back in Rack Shack and Benny. This lesson has been around for a while now. Petunia then stays at the homeless shelter because I guess her home was the theater? I don't know, they didn't really clarify that. She of course speaks to some of the homeless people, learns a valuable lesson, attends the Easter service at church, and somehow Cassie forgives Petunia and also says it was kind of fun. You know, minus the whole bunny destroying the building thing and you would think the hostage situation would kind of come into play, but she doesn't even mention that. She's just like, yeah, forgiven, whatever. God's when love. I think of Easter, oh. it's all the love of God. Love God. Sending a son from heaven above to teach me how to love. That's what he taught me. Her voice doesn't really match her character's design. And at the same time, I don't really appreciate their effort to put her on this pedestal in this episode and show off her singing voice. Like, do you think they got money from like her agent or her studio or something to put her in this? And that's how they produced this episode? I'm, I really don't know. When I think about Easter. Yeah! That was a real nice story, Bob. Thanks, Larry. It was a pretty average story, actually. I, I really miss when they parodied Bible stories. Do you remember back when they parodied Bible stories? Those were the good old days. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. There is far too much cringe here for our own good. I never get tired of that song. Who let him on the show? Is he one of the producer's kids or something? You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that our song is done, we'll take a I think Bob's reaction here is 100% appropriate. Mark 1045. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That's all the time we have for today, kids. Remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Bye! That was Twas the Night Before Easter, another bland, predictable holiday special by VeggieTales. It's really disappointing because uh, I'm not sure if they could make a good holiday special if they wanted to. The Toy Save Christmas, I see that they at least tried at that one. They didn't just blatantly rip off another story. Star of Christmas, okay. This one, okay. I think the best one they've made so far is St. Nicholas. And that's probably because I don't really know St. Nicholas's actual story. So they get a little pass on that one. But it was the most entertaining out of, out of all of them so far. As I said before, Melinda Doolittle, I'm sure you're an amazing singer and I'm sure maybe you have a hit song I don't know about, but uh, in this episode, completely unnecessary, but that wasn't, that wasn't the worst part at all. It's weird because maybe Melinda Doolittle is a Christian and I don't, I don't know. I looked on her website really quick. It doesn't really say anything like that. So I can't state what her faith is, but at least with like Rebecca St. James and uh, an Easter story, we mostly knew who she was. And especially in 2004, at least she had some clout in the Christian music industry, which is, you know, huge nowadays so at least her role in that episode is relevant whereas here it feels it feels a bit forced all in all i would say skip this episode it isn't bad it's just really boring and predictable and sometimes that's worse than being bad but remember that god made you special and he loves you very much bye <laughs>